the the question has been received by the brother from from India. He's asking, can we celebrate Milad by gathering and reciting a nasheed? Is it permissible? Um, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Rabbi Shurali Sadri wa Yisili Amari Wanulubhutamilasani. Ya, kwa kali. So, uh, anything that we do when it comes to the matter of the deen, we have to go to our first source, that is the Quran. And our second source is uh, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. By looking at his Sirah and his whole life in his whole uh, Hadith, then the third source we have the life of the uh, Sahabas. And then we come to our scholars what they say about it. And uh, we do not find the sources anywhere uh, in the Quran or the Sahih Hadith or any type of Hadith where the where the Prophet now do understand this one point to be noted we do not find any hadith or any source in the entire ahadith where the prophet وسلم, has himself set up any type of uh, mafil now do understand that i'm going to keep I'm, i will repeat that again we do not find anything in the entire sirah we do not find any source we do not find any hadith in the entire life of the Prophet وسلم, where he set up or any type of a mahfil or where he set up any type of a gathering where he set up or any type of a special occasion in his entire life wherever that whenever uh, his birthday comes he would ask all the sahabas, okay, sit down, let's say, who will say a nice nasheed about me, who, is, who will say a nice not about me, uh, who will say a nice lyrics about me. We do not find any source. We do not have any hadith. We do not have any sahih hadith. If we read the entire seerah of the Prophet Wasallam, we do not find not even one source with the Prophet Wasallam. All the Sahaba, now I'm not talking about the Prophet him alone, but also the life of the Sahaba. We do not find any source where they set up the mafil, where they set up a gathering, where they set up or any type of special program just because it was the Prophet Sallallahu birthday and they would celebrate and they would and do anything. So that's it. The bottom line, close the book and that's it. Now the second question. If we do not find in the entire life of the Prophet if we do not find the source in the entire life of the Sahabas or Tabain, or for an example, the four great scholars of Islam, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Ibn Hanbal, or Imam Malik, we do not find any type of the source where they set up the gathering, where they set up Mahfil, where they would uh, put everyone together and start reciting something, nasheed or any special occasion or the set up anything at all. So that's it. The game is over. The book has been closed. So this is our thing. What Allah says in the Holy Quran in the Surah Maida, verse number three: "Aliyama akmal to lakum dina kum atmam to alikum neemati wa radhi to lakum aslam dina." So today I have completed your din. That's it. Now what is our din? Let's understand this first. Our din is by following the teachings of the Quran and by adopting the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's our din. Now. If we do not find in this one and not in the life of the Sahabas, so where does these things come from? Shaitan is very smart. Shaitan knows that if a person does his tahajjud and he does everything uh, to please Allah and he is very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let me make him fall into something which is rejected by Allah. That is what it's called bid'ah. Bid'ah is something which is not taught by the Prophet ﷺ. This is an against Sunnah. So those people who are doing in the name of the Prophet ﷺ, they are doing they are in the, they are doing a bid'ah. This is not acceptable, and on the day of judgment, it will be totally rejected because the people who does that 
they are following their imams they are following their scholars they are following their leaders or someone who is doing that because it is all about an ignorance in islam uh, the common muslim they do not understand islam they do not read the books they do not read the prophet that the seer of the prophet it, it does not find anywhere regardless Sunnah shaitan is very smart he wouldn't make the people to dance to jump or to do some occasion now he finds something a new way where to use the word nasheed nasheed or you can say not in urdu or in the hindi you can say not in arabic in uh, in english you say nasheed it is something like the beautiful words about islam about the quran about allah about the prophet so do understand something this is not permitted but to serve the mafils or set up something uh, with uh, with the intention they are doing something good they are not doing going to, uh, doing something good for example um, a child comes to his mother uh, he would say oh my mother i love you i love you so much i can do anything for you and uh, he just bring it he start in front of the mother he start singing he said look mother i made a so much beautiful words so, so beautiful words for you i'm uh, reciting a nasheed for you uh now he start jumping he start dancing he has a music on just to uh please his mother oh mother look i love you so much i'm jumping i am re reciting a nasheed for you i'm doing things so i know you are being very happy now for his inside he's thinking uh, his mother is very happy now let's say what a mother wants the mother says when you come back from school make sure you read the quran make sure you when you read the quran make sure you do your homework and when you read your homework and do some memorize the surahs or memorize the duas do memorize something and then you are free to do whatever you like to do this is the obligation that it will uh, please the mother so rather than exactly what mother says we are doing something what pleasing yourself thinking that it will please the mother this is not pleasing the mother this is pleasing your own self because you think you're pleasing a mother because it's not pleasing a mother because you are going against her, your mother if you really love your mother you just simply do what the mother says so simply if we really love the prophet we have to adopt what he is like about what he taught his sahaba what he taught uh, the next generations to come he left a lot of um, education for us how to live our life according to the quran and according to the sunnah so let's say if the prophet said okay make sure you recite uh, make sure you re, uh, do the salah five times and also do the tahajjud that's like the the best salah and uh, you stay away from what is um, uh, forbidden and uh, you stick to the sunnah and uh, by this one then we rely on the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so so we we ignore that we ignored that and then we started doing something which is not taught by the Prophet which is not taught by the Sahaba and what is not taught by anything else basically we just have our own uh, waswasa that tells us this will please the Prophet this would not please anybody else except the shaitan because he wants you to do something or start something which would not benefit anybody else because it will just justifying your own thinking it is it, it just justifying yourself that you are pleasing allah and that you are pleasing the prophet if you really love allah then follow his way follow his life ati allah wa ati rasul there is a beautiful ayah in a uh, surah ahzab and the verse number uh, 70 70 71 and uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Yaladina Amana to Kullaha wa kulu kolan sadida, you slah lakum amalakum wa yakfur lakum zanabakum. Wa may you tila warsula waka the father father nazima. If you really want to uh, make your amal to be accepted, if you really want to please Allah, if you really want to please the Prophet, then you have to obey Allah 
and follow the Prophet ﷺ. Not something that what comes in your heart, that the waswasa comes in your heart and the shaitan tells you inside, okay, you do this, this will please Allah. This will please the Prophet ﷺ. If you really want to please Allah, let's stick to our prayers. Let's stay away from the TV, stay away from the music, stay away from the nasheed, stay away from the nath and just live a simple, beautiful life like the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahabas live. We should not do something uh, what the ulama tells us, uh, what other scholars tells us. Now, why the public does that? Because their imam does that, their scholars did that, and uh, they are misguiding themselves, and they are also misguiding uh, other people. Because what's going to happen? It's like a train that the front engine is going to uh, fall in the in the hell, and the whole entire train is going to fall in the hell with the entire train because they were just simply uh, following it. You don't need to uh, follow the engine because Allah left us with the, with the Prophet ﷺ left us with the Quran and he left us with the, the son of the Prophet. We have enough material that we do not want to follow anyone but we can get an education, we can uh, compare all the opinions from other scholars, we respect them, we love them, we care them because they are the leaders, they are the scholars but we have to adopt something what is like, uh, which is like um, compared to the Sunnah, they are matching to the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. We should reject it, whatever it is not teaching by the Prophet ﷺ. So we, we have to stick to the Sunnah in order uh, for a major disaster. Because the Shaitan does not uh, just like uh, has a concern about the uh, uh, immediate period. He really think about something like uh, for a major disaster. If you are doing that, your children would do something different. Then the next generation they will start something else. Then the next generation they will start something else. So rather than just coming to the same disasters, the same all disasters, is rather just go back to the original uh, orthodox, which is like the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that make us a real Muslim, and then we rely on the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we do not need to uh, do the nishid because the nishid and everything it is not the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ, not the Sahaba, not even the four Sunnah scholars. This is the teachings of the Shaitan who picks up one leader. Because why Shaitan picks up one leader? Because the Shaitan knows that if he misguide the one leader, so the automatically all the followers of that leader is going to be get misguided if this person is get misguided so understand that if the shaitan target one scholar if the shaitan target one uh, one personality whom there's a thousands of millions of people are following one person like they just gonna follow his teaching they're just gonna follow his teaching so shaitan, shaitan misguiding so naturally all the followers like thousands of millions are gonna get misguided so whatever he's teaching everybody's gonna be following him because they forgot the what the prophet taught us because they just based on a trust based on his uh, pious based on his um, righteousness people accept him so what Allah uh, what, what the prophet taught us to study the life of the Prophet ﷺ in order to be not be get misguided and stick to the Quran and stick to the education.